Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is February 15th, 2024. This is the second video I am producing today. This is a prophecy from the Lord that the Lord gave to uh, Prophet Ken Vischer about 20 years ago. He does not date his writings. Uh, he has been an imminent expectation of this to take place for a long, long time. Uh, the prophecy concerns the relationship between the man-child and the son of perdition. I will put a link to uh, the prophecy in the description box. And it begins with three verses. And uh, Ken Vischer did write these verses before he wrote the prophecy. The first is from Mark 8, verses 34 to 38. And it's from the King James Version. And when Jesus had called the people unto himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. The word life there is soul. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So the generation in which Jesus lived 2,000 years ago was adulterous and sinful, and it's gotten worse since then because now virtually every person in this world except for the Kodeshim overcomers, the holy ones, are full of sin because they follow the man of sin. They follow the son of destruction. And then he quotes 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 to 12 from the Amplified Bible. <clears throat> for the mystery of lawlessness, and Amplified says, that that is the hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority is already at work in the world, but it is restrained only until he who restrains it is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, who is the Antichrist, the Antichrist is written in by the Amplified, will be revealed and the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and bring him to an end by his appearing at his coming. Uh, Ken quotes or references you to Isaiah 11.4. And let's just go look at that very quickly. Isaiah 11.4. Isaiah 11 deals with the seven spirits of God. It starts with those. Verse 1, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of I am shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of I am. And his delight shall be in the fear of I am. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. That was verse 4. <clears throat> verse 5 goes on. Righteousness shall be his belt, the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. Faithfulness means truth or justice. So righteousness and justice, his belt, the belt for his waist, and the belt for his loins. That is the foundation of God's throne, righteousness and justice. So Isaiah 11 verses 1 through 5. Then he continues quoting from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The coming, <clears throat> and then written in by the Amplified, is of the lawless one, of the Antichrist, is through the activity and working of Satan, and will be attended by great power with all sorts of 
pretended miracles, the pretended is written in, and signs and elusive marvels, all of them lying wonders, and by unlimited seduction to do evil and with all wicked deception. For those who are perishing, those who are going to perdition, they write in, because they did not welcome the truth. The truth is capitalized. The truth, of course, is Jesus. But refuse to love it that they might be saved. Therefore, God sends upon them a misleading influence, a working of error, and a strong delusion to make them believe what is false, in order that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe, that is, and they wrote this in, who refused to adhere to, to trust in, and to rely upon the truth. But instead, they took pleasure in unrighteousness. That describes the world we live in, doesn't it? <clears throat> we have all been deceived, all of us except for the Kodeshim, the Holy Ones, the Overcomers, those who will be birthed as the man-child. And then the last verse that he quotes before his prophecy. <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 15 through 18 from the literal version says, For we say this to you in a word of the Lord. So Paul is saying, this is the word of the Lord. God told me this. That we, the living, who remain to the coming of the Lord, will not at all go before those who have fallen asleep. We will not go before those who have already died, who are of the same group. Because the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with a commanding shout of an archangel's voice and with God's trumpet, and the dead in Christ will rise again first. Then we, who remain alive, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to a meeting with the Lord in the air. That meeting is the Episanugogi. That's when we meet the Lord in the air. And that is the doctrine we are not to give up, especially as we see the day approaching. And that's why I have taught about this since 1997 when God really warned me, uh, I'm not watching. And um, I have been watching diligently now for 27 years. And I had been saved. I had been I had received the earnest of the Holy Spirit 20 years before that. And so we will always be with the Lord. So then comfort each other with these words. So those verses, the passages again, Mark 8, 34 to 38, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12, and you should read 2, 1 through 12 because it all deals with the same timing. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 15 to 18. Now here is the prophecy. <clears throat> This is a long prophecy. I will put a link to it. This is God speaking to Ken. Listen intently to my words, my people. For the Lord God does speak at this time to encourage you and to lift you up in the measure of grace needed for this hour. Yes, I am the Lord God, and I do come to speak to those who would overcome, and who would conquer all things in their lives, and who would clothe themselves with the Lord Jesus Christ as their completed salvation. Be not fearful, but believing what the will of the Lord is, for the Lord does come and does work to complete in you this, his perfect will. God at the first in the council of wisdom and understanding set forth creation according to that which would need to be identified with its creator. The ultimate design of God was to bring each soul into his image without flaw. God does come to manifest his fullness in those who have overcome and have come into this image, yet at the same time to convict all those who have held his word in unrighteousness. For the Lord God comes Behold, he does descend to fill his church with his full presence. This coming shall be according to this, that God is honored in them that believe. Now the word church here does not mean what you all think it does, so just keep listening. Yes, I did subject this present creation into futility. God did speak upon it a curse that it would be found in a vain attempt to reconcile itself to its creator. This would cause the present condition of the mystery of iniquity to operate and to deceive and to cause a man's steps to be turned away from God 
and to make them, to make people, dull of hearing and blind of seeing, lest man should hear with his ears and see with his eyes, and should, should be converted, and I should heal them. Heal him. That's from Isaiah, and Jesus quoted that verse. I did subject creation to this futility so that I could find those who would obey my word and come into my image by free choice and by perfect obedience through sufferings. Each one who desired me would suffer the loss of all things relating to this cursed earth so that they would once again be clothed upon with the light of eternal life. This mystery I did complete in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as he came forth with the full measure of my spirit and a body of glorified flesh. Glorified flesh. The spirit meets the physical in Jesus. Glorified flesh. My coming, says God, shall be in the person of Christ without measure upon those who have borne faithfully their lives unto death upon the cross. For the cross is in my heart, says God, and it is by that cross I will reconcile the rest of creation. Those who have overcome are those who have fully died upon the cross. The cross is a present reality to those who are in the walk of victory. But those who bypass the working of the cross, for those, for those who bypass the working of the cross, their carnality will, be, will make excuses and they will miss this motion of my Holy Spirit to prepare my people for my appearing. You cannot bypass the work of the cross. Many have speculated and stated, Lo, here is Christ, or there he is. Believe it not, nor follow their teachings. For Christ is at my right hand. And here he remains exalted by my power until the times of the restitution of all creation. Christ is not appearing in greater measures than some over there and not in others of my body in the earth. He will appear in those who have appropriated that for which Christ appropriated them. He will not appear in the disobedient. His coming shall not include them, but will instead shame them into contrition and to seeking to be taught the first principles of the doctrine of Christ. Christ is not on your left and he's not on your right. His coming is not, lo, here is Christ, or lo, there is Christ coming. He is here with me, says God, as the great high priest who has passed into the heavens to make intercession for his saints. I hold him here until the time of the catching up of those who have overcome with him. That's talking about the birthing of the man-child <clears throat> in Revelation chapter 12. My purpose in speaking unto you, my people, this day is to reveal my appearing in you. For my coming shall be after this manner. Yes, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then you, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So shall you ever be with the Lord. This is not something which shall be seen by all those who have believed on my name. Catch that. This is not the rapture that you think it is. This is not something which shall be seen by all those who have believed on my name. But... For those who have learned to obey me in the midst of their sufferings, who have borne faithfully their cross and have put down death in their midst, my coming shall be in a people. It is also true at the same time that I will appear in the glorified body of the risen Christ. Two things shall happen. My true saints, and the word saint is holy one, my true holy ones will I fill with glory, and they shall behold Jesus as he is. The Lord God does, does come to confirm to you this and to pre prepare you for this great manifestation. <clears throat> it is here upon the earth where I cursed man and creation that this overcoming victory in Christ your Lord must take place. For the earth must be delivered of this curse by the manifestation of my sons and my daughters. This manifestation will end death and will bring about the revelation of God in truth, just as he was in Christ when he arose from the tomb and was confirmed to those who saw him. This time I will confirm my church, and no man will be able to refute this, for my church will come in the power of an endless life 
in glorified bodies. So you see, he's calling his church the man-child. It's called in the book of Revelation chapter 12, the church, uh, not Revelation, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, the church of the firstborn. The man-child is the firstborn of creation besides Jesus. Jesus is the very first fruits and the man-child is the firstborn of all creation, the church of the firstborn. That's why it was so important regarding the firstborn sons in the nation of Israel and why the Levites were chosen for them. So then I would ask that you obey my word and follow on to know me in the fullness of spirit. The daily trials you endure are designed by me to prepare you for my soon appearing and to separate from you flesh from spirit. Get this, the daily trials you endure are designed by me to prepare you for my soon appearing and to separate from you flesh from spirit. I would ask, therefore, that you complain not of your testings, for complaints and murmurings will disqualify you from the prize. <clears throat> I've had to repent of that. This last two years, two and a half years, has been so incredibly difficult for me in terms of health in terms of near-death experiences. And I, I could not see God. I could not understand. Why aren't you healing me? Why am I going through this? Why can I pray and pray and pray and never get better? Why do I always get worse? And I would sometimes just almost begin to rail and uh, had to repent. You know, I can't complain. I finally saw, I finally, when I read this prophecy, a couple of weeks ago, I finally realized, oh, this is why I've been going through this. Oh, God, thank you. It changed my whole perspective. Changed my whole perspective. So don't complain, don't murmur, but instead allow your faith to arise. I'm reading from the prophecy again. Instead, allow your faith to arise as those who are called to triumph in Christ's life. Appropriate this triumph by faith alone. Then I will be pleased and I will prepare you completely for my coming. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I require this from you, my people. Come together often in unity and praise and worship my name. Lift up my name and exalt me together in your faith and in unity and I will raise you up. I will cause you to rise above the circumstances of your life and I will give you triumph as you learn to walk in me as worshipers of their God. My throne and my presence is fixed in the worship of my people. Worship me even in the dark places. Worship me even in the times of trouble and in the times of hardness and rejection. Worship me even if there be but one or two others who would worship God with you. For I am building a spiritual house, a city, a refuge from the storm for those who are yet to come to me to be saved. Yet to come. Be the city of God. Be the life of the tree of life inside this city and be that river of living waters by which the thirst of fallen creation shall be quenched for the Lord God does come as you in the earth in full manifestation the Lord God does come as you Kodeshim as you man child as you holy ones the Lord God comes as you in the earth in full manifestation the time of my coming has been brought to the front of my purposes. Behold, the time of the appearing of Christ and his elect has arrived. Ken Vischer has been expecting this for at least 20 years and he's, he's still alive and still hopes it comes before he dies, just like I do. Do not negate my coming. Set not a time in which I should appear according to your natural thinking and your natural understanding. Know that my appearing is not with outward observation, but by obedience to the acknowledgement of every good thing in you in Christ. I come, but not by the way and means you think would be correct, but according to my promise to come and receive you unto myself. My coming in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ will be according to this rule alone. That rule is that Jesus Christ will only bring eternal life to every soul. The restoration of all things. You have to get it. There is no eternal hell and there is no eternal torment. God is not a tyrant. 
The purpose of the lake of fire is to free you from your sin. And the lake of fire is administered by the man-child. It's administered by the holy ones who are the holiness of God in person. And you will see this. That rule, let me read it again, is that Jesus Christ will only bring eternal life to every soul. Don't cut people out. This is why Jesus said to love your enemies. Very hard word to take, isn't it? Especially when you consider the fighting going on in Israel, right now, ancient Israel. The genocide of the Palestinians. Hate, hate. No, you've got to learn to love your neighbor. That rule, I'm going to read it third time. That rule is that Jesus Christ will only bring eternal life to every soul, even your enemy. This will be according to the rule and timing of my spirit. I have set some in your midst who will prepare you for my appearing. These I will confirm to you as my anointed pastors and teachers and prophets. These will tell you of my callings and the reason for the hope you have in you all to prepare you for the filling up of my spirit without measure at the time of full manifestation. The time has come for me to lift the curse off of this creation and to bring an end to the mystery of iniquity and to destroy by the brightness of my coming that perdition which deceives and discards the simplicity of the gospel. Know that this is my time for this to now take place. And now there's one, two, three, four, five things to not listen to. Listen not to those who would say that the race is completed. Hearken not to those who would say that the cross in your lives is at an end. The race and the cross will not end until I appear. If I have not appeared, then the race is ongoing and the cross is still teaching you to overcome. Number two, listen not to those who would give you a name and a place. For I will not declare righteousness to my body until the time I come to catch them up. Then I will declare them righteous, and I will set them in the earth as deliverers of creation. Number three, listen not to those who say that death is now no more, for death still works in my people until I come. Number four, listen not to those who would cause you to be lifted up in the vanity of imaginations and of faith that I have not given. For there is a false, a false faith, and there is a true faith. Number five. Listen not to those who would state that I am coming to rejoice over all men with great joy for the time of the curse is ended and God freely accepts each one into his dominion. For there is yet to be worked out in many the cleansing of my word. Now, he goes through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 things dealing with his coming. God does come to those first who have obeyed his word and who have not feared to bear the cross, to be identified with the living Christ. These are they who follow the pattern of sonship and who overcame because of the cross. The 11 things are, my coming is vitally connected to your obedience to the cross and to your life in this world, ending upon that cross. Number two, my coming is based on the faith of the elect and knowing eternal life alone and not allowing the life of the world to give them joy. Turn away from the things of the world. Number three, my coming is based on those who have deemed their lives but dung, that they may win Christ as the prize of the high calling. Number four, my coming is set forth in order for those who would be first fruits unto God. It is to them that I first will come. Five, my coming has not yet happened, but I bid you cheer, for it shall be as I overcame. And as I was a conqueror, so shall you also follow this same pattern. Notice this switch to Jesus. Jesus was the one who overcame. So this prophecy is coming from Jesus. Six, my coming is vitally linked to those who have not had their faith overthrown by the trials of this world and by the curse that abides upon it. Number seven, my coming is vitally linked to those who only identify with the Lord and his resurrection and who by faith wait for my promise to appear. Number eight, my coming shall be after this manner, that I will name those who will reign with me as I appear, and I will give unto each of them a crown of life which will never fade away. Number nine, my coming shall clothe those who did obey me with bodies of light and glory. Number ten, my coming shall not diminish you but build you again, 
and to those who only know the nature of Father as their portion and bodies that cannot die or be influenced by the world and the beasts that rage within it. Number 11. My coming will be to those who exchanged the mark of the beast for the mark of the Father upon their foreheads. Have you done that? Have you come out of Babylon? Have you cast the mark of the beast away from you? Has God sealed you because you refuse to take the mark of the beast? Do you make decisions in which you stop trusting man? You stop taking the mark of the beast? You stop following the beast wherever he leads you? And you follow the Lord only wherever he leads you? So I'm going to read 11 again. My coming will be to those who exchange the mark of the beast for the mark of Father upon their foreheads. It is to those I will appear and will set as my government in the earth, even the 144,000 faithful followers of the Lamb of God. Read uh, Revelation chapter 14, starting with verse 1. And here is his final word of this prophecy. Be not faithless, but believing, for I have called you to inherit this. For I do cause to descend the new Jerusalem by which you shall know of the purity of my salvation. For this city does descend as my body. New Jerusalem is the body of Christ. New Jerusalem is the church. For this city does descend as my body into the earth and to draw all men into that time when the nations shall come to know God. See, the new covenant has not even gone out in the world yet. Jesus prayed for the Kodeshim. He prayed for the Holy Ones in John chapter 17. He didn't pray for the world. He said, I'm not praying for the world. He called out the man-child over these last 2,000 years. And then he also called out uh, the man-child during the age before that. All of the Holy Ones throughout history who have overcome are part of the man-child. For this city does descend as my body into the earth and to draw all men into that time when the nations shall come to know God. You are part of this if you have overcome. It is you as this city that descends and that my coming is made sure and the manifestation of my saints, the manifestation of my holy ones takes place. This city will be the reality of my spirit in this natural earthen creation. It is to the dust of this earth, to humanity, that this city, the city of God, New Jerusalem, will descend. The city descends to all time periods, to all those of the former and the hinder sea. The former sea is all of the nations who existed prior to Christ. The hind, and it includes Sodom and Gomorrah. So these nations will be actually resurrected into the earth and the overcomers that belong to that time period will preach to them and they will administer the rod of iron to them and administer the lake of fire to them. The hinder sea is that basically that sea, that, that former sea, you look to the east and you look to the Persian Gulf and Persia and Babylon Assyria, all of those nations. The Hinder Sea is, you think of the Mediterranean Sea and the, uh, all of the European nations in the West. So the East would be the former sea and the West would be the Hinder Sea. To all mankind who have longed for my life to overtake them and to deliver them from death, it is this city that does come as my overcomers to give an inheritance and a joy. This city will settle upon the clay structure of this natural creation to blend the natural creation as one with me in spirit, that the Lord would no longer curse the earth and that man will have removed from him the defilements of that same curse. Know this, for this honor I do give unto my holy ones, those who have overcome for their lives constitute the dominion and the reign of my throne in the new Jerusalem, even upon this earth. I am the Lord God, 
even your father. I am, I am. End of Prophecy by Ken Vischer, given about 20 years ago. Check out the link and read it over and over. Thank you, Father, for your word. We trust in you. Amen.